everybody, it's Chris at Dean's Creek Ranch. Well today, I'm putting together the first implement that I got for the tractor. I actually got it back in the winter, but it's now, with all the rain that we've been getting, it's now time to spray the fields for weeds so we can get on top of these weeds and get back into some hay production. The lawnmower in the background is mama on the lawnmower. Sorry about the hand. Anyways, that's the sprayer I'm putting together right now. And when finished, it comes partially assembled. We got some tractor supply. When finished, hopefully you can see that. It'll look like that. 10 foot spray. By my calculations, it's gonna take two and a half tanks. It's a 40 gallon tank. Two and a half tanks to do the 10 acre front pasture and 1.75 tanks to do the pond pasture. The trick is your speed and flow rate. So. Of course, I'm going to fill it with water first and go out there. And if I can roughly get 40 gallons, 10 acres, if I get like 40% of the field sprayed, then or abouts, I have a pretty good working knowledge of my rate of speed versus flow. It's going to take a little minute to get on top of it, but I really would like to get the field sprayed today because there's no rain forecasted in sight. That doesn't mean anything in Texas, but it's just good to say. So. I will update videos and pictures as we go along. Wish me luck. Okay, update. Took me a little bit longer than I planned to um, build this thing. And that's because I'm a dummy. And the three-point hitch part I put on backwards. And I didn't really notice until halfway through. So I had to undo it and then put it back together. So it took me a little bit more time than usual and it got really hot out here. So I took a break in the afternoon. That being said, let me flip this around because I got a few things to show you. Oh man, I can't even flip it around. Anyway, oh, Ryan's home. So I've got it hooked up to the three point hitch and I had to extend these out so these bars would fit in and I pulled the bolts out a little bit as well so I can throw those cotter pins in there. Speaking of cotter pins, this didn't have any on it. It's kind of one of the things I didn't really know about. Oh, there's Casey. Hi, making a video. Nice, I'm just coming to check on you. Okay, one second. That's nice. Cold beer would have been nicer. Anyway, so I had to extend out the arms to get the three point hitch feature to fit and I've got a great battery idea because this piece right here is an extension cord to a battery. And obviously if the battery's in the back of the tractor, you hook it up to the battery that's on the tractor. Unfortunately, I don't have that kind of tractor. It's all the way in the front. So I came up with a little bungee cord idea and I found this battery just sitting on the side of the house. Clearly the pre uh, previous owner had it. Put a charge on it all day. Yeah, no. Manufacturing 2016. Been sitting here that was wishful thinking so it's not gonna i'm not gonna be able to start it today i have no battery but it's built and it's on the tractor and i wanted to show you so this is basically going to be a two-parter because i gotta work tomorrow so anyways let me start it up and then i'm going to show you the three-point operation i'm going to put it into uh up to a here she goes and see how she sits right up there we're close to spraying our first fields I mean really close I'm one trip at, uh, to Walmart and to get a little lawn battery and then that thing will hook up to it it's got a little on off switch and then I'm gonna fill it with water and then we'll go uh, test the flow rates and whatnot so I'll be back this is gonna be a multi-day video hang with me nothing goes easy or quick on the ranch anymore so talk to you later hey everybody I'm back uh, back from work. So yesterday I got the sprayer hooked up and I put water in the tank per the instructions. And then also I went and got myself a battery over here. And that's my little makeshift system to run that pump. And so I put the boom out and the, the trick is you got to know it's flow rate and speed. And so the instructions on this, and I'll put a link and a hashtag at the end of this for the uh, manufacturer. They're not paying me, but you know, they did a good job. 
um, it's flow rate and speed. So I had Casey clock me with one of the cars and I need basically three miles an hour at a pressure. You can regulate the pressure here by turning this valve. There's the pressure gauge right there. So I want 25 PSI at three miles an hour and that gives you 10 gallons per acre. And that is exactly what the DuraCore people want to get rid of these weeds. Now, I'm definitely gonna do it before because I wanna show you what the grass looks like. And so they say, don't cut it for two weeks and I won't. Uh, the grass is good, but you know, there's just weeds all in it. So let me, let me turn this around here and I'm gonna show you the grass here. And there's spiders running around and Casey just killed a copperhead over by the chicken coop. That was fun. Maybe I'll put a picture of the dead copperhead in the video. She was freaking out. She's a ranch girl. The thistle over there is all dead. There's all this kind of scrubby kind of stuff inside this grass, but um, Cody over at Fannin County is uh, their agricultural person. He told us to get on a, a spray program. And so it's probably not, you know, it's gonna take a year or two to get the, the weeds under control here. But the idea being ultimately, two cuts of hay per year. We'll get on top of our hay and we can get some more cows over here. And those won't have names, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to show you the grass before I get on it and spray it. And I'm gonna show you how it goes when I spray. And then two weeks later, before I cut it, I want to come out here and show you, I'm gonna walk in the same area here, if there's any difference. Hopefully there is. So, next stop is to get the cows pinned off in the far pasture over there. Uh, I've got a gate down there. I'm gonna pin them off with some uh, treats, get them off this. They can graze on it, of course, but you know, you want a couple days to let it do its thing. Then I'll let the cows back over and then I'll do that side. And that's it, wish me luck. Okay, final test with just water before I put the spray in. It's about half full. As you can see here, the nozzles, they spray out a little bit. I'll lower the boom a little bit. But they say 10 foot, and that's about 10 foot. I've got it dialed in here. This little motor. Oh, I should say. Right about 25 PSI. And at three miles an hour, which is in B range, Second gear, 1600 RPMs is three miles an hour. Side note, the four wheel drive on this tractor just paid for itself. I'll throw a picture in on this uh, video of what I had to go through to get the cows locked in on the other side. And I did not expect the mud to be that soft and that deep. And basically I just hammered the throttle and was hoping for the best. But uh, if it wasn't for the four wheel drive catching on the other side, I think it would have been stuck. This is not a piece of equipment you want to get stuck. This thing is heavy. So I got lucked out there and then basically on the way back in, I put it in B3 range and just hammer down. So anyway, that's the final test. We're spraying in about 20 minutes. Okay, just getting ready to get started here. I just want to do a last little look at these weeds and for reference there's the trough and I want to come to this exact same spot these are actually pretty weeds but so long there's the bad boy let's go Back there. The hardest 
part, and luckily the ground's all still wet, is remembering where you just were. I've got uh, the, the ruts from yesterday's test that are kind of guiding me. I got one more row and then I'm on my own. So I'm, basically what I do is I look at the house and I see where I'm pointed at and I scoot a little bit over. So, I don't know. I'm trying to, you know, not do the same place twice, I guess I'd like to say. If you can even hear me. This thing's a little loud. So... Got about a third of the tank in. Okay, ran through my first tank. So, a couple issues. Uh, one of three things is happening. I've got the math wrong, or that's not 10 acres, or I don't have the flow rate right, because I basically had to kind of somewhat crisscross my tracks because the way I figure at 10 acres at 60 ounces per tank for the, by the recommended dosage flow rate and speed it takes two and a half tanks to do that field so like I said one of three things is happening it isn't 10 acres which I GPSed it and it should be the flow rates wrong or oh the third thing that I forgot that I'm probably doing is I'm um it's got a 10 foot spray pattern, but I think I'm going too wide. Um, and so I basically crisscrossed everything on the first third and I'll take a picture and I'll show you, uh, just to make sure I got it. Not only that, uh, Duracore recommends, um, was it 16 ounces per acre or something like that. And I'm doing 15. So it is, it is a little, um, on the light side anyway, cause it's my first time out. So, as far as like tracks go, once I started figuring out that I'm not using as much chemicals as I should be and I crisscrossed everything, I stopped kind of going the long ways back and forth and I crisscrossed it. So now I'm gonna fill it up, this is tank two, and I'm gonna up the pressure a little bit and I'm gonna keep the spacing a little tighter because it should be two and a half tanks of um, Duracore mixed with water to spray that field. And I was about a third of the way in and I still had 10 gallons to go. So it's a little off. There's a little bit of a learning curve here. And like I said, the, the solution's um, a hair on the light side anyway. So gonna fill up, go back out there and I'll give you progress on tank two. So that was the trick. Overlap the tracks on the two small part. Basically every time I go through, I drag the wheel in the last rut. You see that? I bumped the pressure up to 30 to 25, and uh, I'm just about ready to go do, to go fill up again, but I'm only going to do a half turn. You see the fence line right there. I've done over two thirds of the field, so I think the map is going to check out. So the math worked. Remember kids, when am I ever gonna use that math in the real world? Right in here, right now. Down to the last pass, two and a half tanks. If I probably backed the pressure off just a hair, I would have got the full, I mean, I was a half pass short. That's it. So the 10 acres out there has been sprayed for weeds with Duracore. Then it wants to cut for two weeks. I went ahead and showed you what it looked like before. We'll do a uh, we'll do a uh, two week update to see how it did. Fimco Industries worked great. Sprayer worked great. Like, subscribe. Hold on. Oh dear lord, that's good. Like, subscribe, hit the notification button, and what do we say at Dean's Creek Ranch? See ya.